The state calls Colby Ryan. Mr. Ryan, before we get started, just a few things. Uh, first, have you followed any of the testimony of this trial online on the news or watched it from any of the viewing locations? No. Okay, thank you for that. Also, we are making a record with the court reporter, so please make verbal responses to any questions and try to avoid speaking at the same time as anyone asking you any questions. Sounds good. With that in mind, Mr. Wood, you can inquire. Thank you. Mr. Ryan, can you state your name and spell your last name for the record? So it's Colby Ryan. Last name is R-Y-A-N. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ryan, how do you know the defendant, Lori Vallow? She's my mother. Okay. I'd ask that the, the witness be shown States Exhibits 6 and 4. are previously admitted, correct? Yes. All right. Exhibits 6 and 4 are both being shown to the witness. Mr. Ryan, can you just uh, briefly look at those and familiarize yourself with those exhibits? <clears throat> and then if, Your Honor, if I could publish those to the jury very quickly. You can. Mr. Ryan, I'm going to show you what's been previously marked and admitted. States Exhibit 6. Do you recognize that person? Yes. Who is that? Um, that's my sister, Tylee. Brian. Okay. What was your specific relation with Tylee Ryan. She was my half sister. Okay. Mr. Ryan, I'm going to show you what's been marked previously and admitted as States Exhibit 4. Do you know that person? Yes. Who was that? My little brother, JJ Vallow. Okay. What's your specific relation with JJ Vallow? He was my adopted brother. Okay. Mr. Ryan, do you know who Charles Vallow was? Yes. Who was he? He's my stepfather. Okay. Uh, do you know approximately how long he was your stepfather? Um, 13 years, I think. Okay. Do you recall the day that Charles Vallow Charles Vallow died? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you happen to have a conversation with Lori Vallow about how he died? Yes. Where were you when you had that conversation? I was at work. Okay. What time of day was it? Around 2 or 3 p.m. Okay. And uh, was it on the telephone? Yes. Did you call her or did she call you? She called me. Okay. Uh, what did she tell you about Charles Vallow's death? She told me that he had died from a heart attack. From a heart attack? From a heart attack. Okay. Did she say anything about him being shot? No. Okay. Did you go over to Lori Vallow's house that day? Yes. Uh, when did you go over? After my shift, around 7. So I got there around 7.30. Okay. What did you see when you got there? When I opened the door, um, Tylee had answered the door and gave me a hug. 
and I didn't see anybody else in the house when I opened the door. Okay. Uh, did you did you go inside? Yes. What did you see when you went inside? After I saw Tylee, I saw Alex sitting on the couch watching TV. Okay. And did you observe anything out of the ordinary about Alex? And let me clarify, is this Alex Cox? Yes. Okay. Did you observe anything out of the ordinary about Alex Cox? Yes. What was that? He was wearing a white bandage around his head. Okay. Uh, did you speak with him? Yes. What was the nature of that conversation? I asked him why he was wearing the bandage, and he said that he got hit in the head with a bat and then shot Charles. Okay. Was that the first time you heard that Charles had been shot? Yes. Okay. Did you see Lori Vallow that night? Yes. What was her general demeanor? Um, calm. Did you ever have a chance to speak with Lori Vallow about Charles Vallow's life insurance policy? Yes. Uh, when was that conversation? A few weeks after Charles was killed. And what did she tell you? She just had mentioned that she wasn't receiving any of the life insurance money from Charles. Okay. Was it your understanding from your conversation uh, that Lori Vallow believed she was the beneficiary of Charles's life insurance policy until after he died? Yes. Okay. Uh, when Charles was alive, did you ever have occasion to speak with Lori Vallow about her and Charles's finances? Yes. How often would that happen? I would say maybe monthly or twice a month or twice every other month. Okay. Uh, what... What was the general nature of those conversations? Mostly to tell me that they were, um, quote unquote, out of money. I'll object to any hearsay, Your Honor. I don't know who he's referring to. Uh, the question was regarding Lori Vallow. I'll overrule it. Well, he's quoting either Charles or Lori. I don't know which. All right. Why don't you ask another question, Mr. Wood, and clarify who the sure. speaker would be? Thank you. Mr. Ryan, uh, in regards to the, the question I just asked, were those conversations with Lori Vallow? Yes. Okay. And you testified that she would frequently tell you that she and Charles were out of money? Yes. Thank you. Do you know who Tylee Ryan's father was? Yes. Okay. Who was he? Joe Ryan. Do you know if he is alive or deceased? He's deceased. Do you know when that happened? In 2018. Okay. Do you know uh, when in 2018? I don't remember. Okay. Were you aware if Tylee Ryan received Social Security benefits when Joe Ryan passed away? Yes. I'll object foundation. There would need to be additional foundation there, okay. Mr. Wood, to know how this witness would have that information. All right. Colby, did, or Mr. Ryan, uh, did you ever speak with Tylee Ryan about money? Yes. Um, are, you, are you aware she had a bank account? Yes. Uh, did you ever receive money from Tylee Ryan? Yes. And did you, uh, how did you know where the money she gave you came from? I'll object, Your Honor. That can only be answered by hearsay. I tend to agree with that, Mr. Wood. Is there some exception to the hearsay rule that would apply? Um, declarant unavailable because she's deceased. Well, there are different rules for declaring unavailable. I don't know that this falls within any of the exceptions for an unavailable. I, I'll rephrase the question, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Did you ever receive money from Tylee Ryan? Yes. Okay. Uh, how often would that usually happen? Um, mo mostly just randomly through oh. Venmo, maybe. Okay. And so you, you would receive money through her, from her through Venmo? Yes. Okay. Um, to your knowledge... 
did Lori Vallow ever send you money by sending it to Tylee, who would then forward it to you through Venmo? Yes. And how do you know that? I would speak with my mom, and then she would send it to Tylee, and Tylee would use Venmo to send it to me. Okay. I'm going to call your attention to September 8th, 2019. Did you have a text conversation with Tylee Ryan that day? Yes. Uh, what was the general nature of that text conversation? I had asked her if she could transfer money over from Venmo to me. And how did she respond? I'll object, Your Honor, hearsay. All right, what's the response? Your Honor, it's not being offered for the truth of the matter. It's to, uh, it's offered to being show the effect on the, the witness. If it's not offered for the truth, Your Honor, then it's not relevant. Your Honor, there's many times evidence comes in not for the truth of the matter where it's relevant. Uh, I'm going to find, given the background here, what's already been laid in a foundation, I'll overrule the objection finding under Rule 804B6 that this can come in as evidence of a material fact. Okay. So uh, you may want to re-ask the question so the witness can answer, Mr. Wood. Can, uh, can I ask the court reporter what my last question was? How did she respond when you asked her to send uh, money to you? She said that she was no longer in control of her money and that my mom was handling it. Okay. Did you happen to speak to your mom that day? Yes. On September 8th, 2019? Yes. Uh, did she tell you where they were? Yes. Uh, did she? Uh, were you able to hear Tylee? on that phone call? Yes. Where were they? They said that they were in the Yellowstone gift shop. Okay, and is that Yellowstone National Park? Yes. Okay. Did you ever happen to have a conversation with Lori Vallow after Charles Vallow's death about your sister's money? Yes. Um, what was the nature of that conversation? I don't really remember. Okay. Uh, do you recall your mother uh, speaking specifically about Tylee Ryan's money? I think so. Okay. And do you recall if she uh, mentioned her use of that money? She mentioned that she was going to be using that money for their lives, bills, and taking care of them while she found a new job. Okay. Mr. Ryan, were you contacted by the Gilbert police on the night of November 27, 2019? Yes. Well, what was the purpose of that contact? They were asking where Tylee was first, and then afterwards they asked me where JJ was. Okay. Uh, was Tylee with you on November 27th of 2019? No. Uh, was JJ with you on the night of November 27th, 2019? No. Uh, at that time, had you had cause to be concerned about Tylee Ryan? Yes. Uh, what, gave, what gave rise to that concern? My conversations over text with her. Okay, and what was it about your conversations and text with Tylee that gave you concern? When I first texted her, I had followed up with a few different phone calls and FaceTimes. And then the texts I was receiving back were just in different language than how Tylee would type and talk and just the way she used her punctuation and things like that. It was just different. Okay, so was it fair to say you felt like 
it wasn't Tyler you were speaking with? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and do you know approximately how long you continued to receive text messages from her after you felt like it changed? A little bit after her birthday on the 24th, September 24th. Okay. Did you continue to receive money from her Venmo after September of 2019? I think so. Okay. Do you know approximately how many times you received money from her? I know the ones I remember were Cash App. But okay. I can't remember the Venmo specifically. Okay. So did you receive money from a Cash App? Yes. Okay. And was that under Tylee's name? No. Whose name was that under? It was under, there was two different accounts. One was under Lori Vallow, and I think the other one was Lori Vallow, something else. Okay. After Charles Vallow died, did Lori Vallow tell you she was going to get married again soon? Yes. Uh, when was this conversation? A few weeks after. Okay. Did she tell you who she was going to marry? No. Okay. I'm going to go back to when the Gilbert police contacted you on the night of November 27th, 2019. Did you contact Lori Vallow after the Gilbert police visited? Yes. Uh, what did you say to her? I asked her what was going on, why they were looking for the kids. And just to try to tell me what was happening. Okay. Did you know where Lori Vallow was on November 27th? No. Uh, were you aware if she had moved from the Phoenix area? Yes. Okay. Uh, did she ever tell you where she moved to? No. Did you have a conversation with her about where she had moved to? No. Okay. Uh, did, did you ever ask her where she was? Yes. How did she respond? When she initially moved, she just told me she was moving somewhere cold. And that it was dangerous for her to tell anybody where she was going. Okay. You said you spoke with her on the night of November 27, 2019. The day before Thanksgiving, did you try to contact her on Thanksgiving? Yes. Uh, what happened? Her phone was disconnected. Okay. Were you able to contact her after that? No. The state has no further questions at this time, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Um, Mr. Archibald, do you want to start your cross at this point, or would you like to take our mid-morning break and start cross after the break? I'll leave it up to you. Okay, I think the timing works out well for that. So we'll go ahead and take our mid-morning break, and then Mr. Archibald uh, can commence with his cross-examination after that, so uh, right around 10.30. All right, please. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. We're back on the record on case CR 22211624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. We just concluded our mid-morning break. I briefly discussed with <clears throat> counsel in chambers an issue of the ordering of witnesses at this time, understanding the defense intended to call uh, Mr. Ryan also as a witness. So. I'll allow some latitude in the scope of the cross-exam based on that representation and allow the state any further redirect as well. So with that in mind, um, we'll have the jurors brought back in and you can commence with your cross-examination then, Mr. Archibald.
slide, please. All right, thank you. Please be seated. All right, we'll next uh, continue with any cross examination. Mr. Archibald, you can cross examine at this time. I'll remind the witness, Mr. Ryan, you're still under oath for purposes of your testimony today. Good morning, Mr. Ryan. Good morning. Uh, how old are you? 27. And your mom is Lori, and who's your dad? My dad is William LaJoya. And uh, as a child, did you have a relationship with him? No. As a child, who raised you? My mother. And then did you also have a stepdad? Yes. And what was his name? Joseph Ryan. And is that where you get the surname Ryan? Yes. So did, did Joseph Ryan actually ever adopt you, or did you just take his name? I'm not sure. Okay. But uh, as far as you know, your name is Colby Ryan? Yes. All right. And uh, are you single or married? I'm married. And how many children do you have? Two. And how old are they? Four and one. And has Lori ever met your children? Objection relevance. What's the relevance of that? It's just foundation, Your Honor, just background. I'll overrule that objection. You can answer. She met my oldest daughter when she was a baby. Okay. And uh, you have siblings, Tylee and JJ? I did. And how much older are you than Tylee? Six years. And how much older are you than JJ? I'm not exactly sure of the age difference. Was your early childhood with uh, your mom and Joe Ryan, was that a good childhood or bad? Bad. And why is that? Objection relevance. Overruled. Without going into the details, Mr. Ryan, uh, did your stepfather abuse you? Objection yes. relevance, and I think we need to approach. Let's have a sidebar, counsel. All right, after a sidebar, the court is going to sustain the state's objection. I'll instruct the jury to disregard that last question that was asked. It won't be answered. And Mr. Archibald, you can continue your inquiry. Did your mother, Lori, protect you from Joe Ryan? Uh, same objection. Overruled. Yes. Did she protect her, your sister, Tylee, from Joe Ryan? Yes. When your, your mother, Lori, protected you from Joe Ryan. Was that by moving away from him? Yes. And was that also by divorcing him? Yes. And then your next stepdad was Charles Vallow? Yes. And did you have a good relationship with him? Yes. And did he treat you better than Joe Ryan. Absolutely. And you uh, were able to form a relationship with Charles Vallow? Yes. And did you and your brother and sister, Tylee and JJ, have, uh, have fun times growing up with Charles Vallow? Yes. Did, 
Did you have a good relationship with Tylee and JJ? Yes. Now, uh, did did Tylee have uh, some health issues? Yes. What did she have? <clears throat> when she was younger, she had pancreatitis and had to go to the hospital for that. And, and pancreatitis can be sometimes a painful, debilitate, debilitating disease. Yes. Okay. And so you'd, you you saw that in Tylee that she'd have to go to the hospital for that. Yes. And did JJ uh, have special needs? Yes. And do you know what those were? I think he was diagnosed with autism. And did your mother, Lori, uh, care for uh, your needs, Tylee's needs, and JJ's needs when you were growing up? Yes. Did you have some struggles as a teenager? Yes. Most teenagers do, right? Mm -hmm. And was she able to help you through those struggles? Sure. Uh, did you, uh, were you involved in athletics as a, as a teenager? Yes. And did that also help you through your teenage years? Yes. Did you struggle with depression as a teenager? Yes. And did Tylee also? Yes. And were you and Tylee able to talk about how to work through the depression? Objection relevance. Sustained. Did you have suicidal thoughts as a teenager? Objection yes. relevance. Uh, before you answer, let me roll in the objection. I'll sustain the objection and move to, or I'll strike the answer and instruct the jury not to disregard that last answer. Did your mother, Lori, help you and Tylee with thoughts of lack of self-worth? Yes. Did your mother encourage you to do good things in your life? Yes. Did your mother encourage Tylee to do good things in her life? I don't know. Were you out of the home by then? Probably. Okay. So you're uh, six years older than Tylee? Mm -hmm. So how old were you when you left the home? 17. And, and where did you go when you were 17? Kansas. And who did you live with there? My uncle, Adam. Okay. And then uh, did you come back to live with Lori and Charles again? Yes. And where, where were you living then? In Chandler, Arizona. And uh, did you graduate from high school? No. Did you get your GED? Yes. And is that the same with Tylee? Yes. Tylee did not graduate from high school but got her GED as well. Objection leading. Overall, you can answer. Yes, she did. And so uh, when you moved back home, did you uh, go to college or what did work or what did you do? I went to school. And where did you go to school? Chandler Gilbert Community College. All right. Did you also uh, go on a on an LDS mission? Yes. And how old were you when you did that? 18. And where did you go? Nampa, Idaho. And... and uh, how long did that last? Six weeks at the most. And then you decided uh, to go home. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so did you actually make it to Nampa, or, or were you still being trained? Yes, I relevance. It. I'll sustain the objection, uh, ask the jurors to disregard that last answer. Did Was your mother supportive of your decision to go on a mission and then to come home from a mission. Yes. When, uh, when you were taught by my client, uh, did she teach you about Jesus? Yes. Did you and your mother sing songs about Jesus? At church. Uh, did your mother teach you to believe 
in Jesus. <clears throat> she built the foundation. And uh, did she teach you about uh, multiple lives? Did you ever hear that from her? No. Did she teach you about multiple creations? Did you ever hear that from her? No. Did she teach you that you uh, was someone else, that you were someone else in another life, in another world? No. Did she tell you that you had been someone else in a previous life in another creation? Objected. Object asked and answered. <clears throat> Overruled. You can answer. No. Did she teach you about zombies? No. Did she teach you about casting out evil spirits? No. Did she teach you about light and dark scales? No. Did she teach you about vibrations? She said stuff about vibrations, but she never taught me. And, and what, what, what was vibrations about? I don't know. She said me and her had the same vibration. Did she say that as a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I would assume did, good. Did you take it as a good thing? I didn't take it as anything. Okay. As a child, uh, did she teach you that she was a goddess? No. Did she teach you that she was a leader of the 144,000? No. Did she teach you that the LDS Latter-day Saint religion was wrong? No. Did she teach you that you should join a new church called the Church of the Firstborn? No. When she taught you about Jesus, were they stories of Jesus healing sick people? We read scriptures, so if that's what you're talking about. When she taught, taught you about Jesus as a child, did she teach you that Jesus cast out evil spirits? No. Did she ever tell you that Jesus killed someone? No. So were you still at home when uh, Charles filed for divorce from Lori? No. Uh, were you at home when they reconciled? No. How was your relationship to Alex Cox? <coughs> Minimal. Uh, how would you describe him? Odd. Was he always odd? He was crude and kind of funny and odd. Uh, did you? What did you think of the relationship between Alex Cox and your mother? I didn't really see Alex a lot until around my wedding. No, he wasn't someone who... Uh, came to visit you as a child? Not really. And then, what year was it you got married? 2018. So in 2018, uh, did you start to see Alex more? Yes. And then, but you were trying to spend less time because you had a new wife. Uh, you tried to spend less time around your mother and Alex. I wouldn't say less time. I moved out. Okay. And uh, and you wrote uh, a book of, since uh, since this case started. Is that is that true? Yes. And the book is called The God Over Odds. Does that sound right? Yes. And you, what what is the purpose of your book? It's my testimony about how Jesus loves you about how he got me through my life. And so Jesus is a, is a good figure in your life. Yes. Not someone who would wreak damage to others. No. You, uh, you also appeared on some, some media stations, is that right? Yes. Uh, some on YouTube. Um, yes. Was that your 
a god over odds media company no okay it, it is that still uh uh an ongoing concern the media company or is not that right now no okay and then you did uh a docu series is that right mm -hmm. what uh, were you paid for that no okay and uh in your in this docu series uh let me read this quote, and you tell me if that's what you said. My mom has spent her whole life protecting us kids. Yes. After she met Chad, J after she met Chad Daybell, she changed. I don't remember, but yes. Okay. And, and so those were the this. You don't remember, but it. it in that docu series, could you said it could have said that? Yes. In your in your book and in your docu series, you you talk a lot about your about your childhood, mm -hmm. um, and and you you never once thought your mom would hurt someone. Is that fair to say? Yes. Did did you love your mom? Yes. Did she love you? I think so. Your your book, you have a quote. This book is dedicated to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for always being there with me throughout my entire life. Does that sound right? Yes. And who taught you that God was good? Church and my mom. Another quote from your book, I'm here to tell you what God has done in my life and how he has gotten me through trying times. He is my strength. Does that sound right? Yes. Another quote from your book, God knows us better than we know ourselves, so he knows how to use us. He used our lives to glorify his name. Does that sound right? Yes. Also in your book, I, I struggled with depression in my teen years. I've, I've been suicidal because I saw no hope. Your Honor, I'm going to object based on our previous objection. Sustained. I'll ask the jurors to disregard that last question. You don't have thoughts of suicide now, do you? No. Objection. All right, it's already been asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection again. I'll ask the jurors to please strike that last answer. God has navigated me through all of life's obstacles. Is that a true statement? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I don't have any other questions. All right, Mr. Wood, if the state would like redirect, uh, as we previously discussed, that went well outside the scope of your direct examination, so I'll allow you to go into any areas also brought up by the defense in that examination. Yep. You are made of the state take a brief recess? Yes. It's five minutes. Okay. Thank you. If it's five minutes, why don't we all have uh, – do we need to have the jurors excused, or you just need to – get something situated.
I don't think we need to have the jury, the jurors. Okay, excused. well, I'll just stand then. If you want to stretch your legs, you may. Mr. Wood, if you'd like to commence with uh, redirect, you may. Thank you. Mr. Ryan, you, uh, defense asked you about when you moved out of the home. Yes. Okay. Um, since the time you moved out of your home, has your mom ever asked you for money? No. Uh, did she give you money? Yes. Okay. Um, did, did she ever ask you to do, uh, has she ever asked you for anything since you moved out of the home? Nothing but to help them move. Okay, just to help them move. Okay. Uh, your father's still alive? Yes. You don't receive Social Security benefits for a dead parent? No. Okay. Does your mom control your bank account? No. But you testified she's given you money, right? Yes. In fact, at some point, didn't she even give you Tylee's debit card to purchase yourself a birthday gift? Yes. Okay. In the last several years, did your mom ever ask you to attend any special religious meetings? No. Okay. So she didn't ask you to come to her house and listen to Chad Daybell? No. She didn't ask you to come to her house and participate in something called castings? No. When did you find out where your mom had moved to? After I saw it on the news. Okay. And do you recall when that was? That was December 19th, 2019. So she didn't share that information with you? No. When did you find out that your brother and sister were missing? The day that they had <clears throat> come to ask where they were. Okay. And did you ever ask your mom about that? No. Okay. Did you ever have a conversation with your mom about her life insurance policy? Yes. What was the nature of that conversation? I think when I was younger, she had told me that she had a life insurance policy, that if anything ever happened, that there was something there. Did she ever tell you that she was listing you as the sole beneficiary of a life insurance policy? I think when I was a teenager. Okay. And Tylee and JJ were alive then, right? Yes. But she only listed you? Yes. I asked you earlier if your mom had asked you for anything. Uh, do you know if your mom asked Tylee for money? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, State has no further questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Any recross on that, Mr. Archibald? No, Your Honor. Okay. That will conclude your testimony then, Mr. Ryan. I believe Mr. Ryan may be here under subpoena also. Any objection to him being excused? Uh, no, we don't. Well, Your Honor, we'd ask that he be kept under the subpoena just uh, momentarily, but uh, we can excuse him at the moment. Okay, so you can go ahead and step down then. Uh, Mr. Ryan, just, I guess, remain here in the courthouse while you're still under subpoena until you receive further notice either from the court or the state. Thank you.
All right, is the state ready to call its next witness? At this time, the state would ask to publish uh, State's Exhibit 34B to the jury. It's been previously admitted without objection. Okay. All right, any objection to that being published at this time from the defense? Well, Your Honor, if, um, if we have any questions about the, the audio, then maybe we can recall Mr. Ryan. Uh, but, but as of right now, um, it has been admitted, but I don't know why it wasn't played to the jury while we had a witness on the stand. Yeah, it's a little unusual to just play an audio without any witness on the stand, I would say. Um, I think the exhibits are, once they're admitted, they're part of the record, but they need to tie in somehow to a foundation of how they've come in. So, Your Honor, it was already explained that this was a jail phone call between Colby Ryan and his mother. Uh, the foundation's already been established. Um, we've asked to keep him under subpoena in case he needed to be brought back in for questioning. Uh, but uh, due to the nature of it, uh, we would ask to be able to just publish it to the jury now. All right. I'll allow the exhibit, since it's been admitted, to be published. Uh, however, only on the condition that uh, Mr. Ryan remain available and subject to recall if the defense has any further questions for him subsequent to publishing the exhibit. So at this time, we'll allow for the jurors to hear the recording on the exhibit 34B. Mr. Wood, I apologize to interrupt. Could I have a brief sidebar with counsel? Going back on the record, I had a brief sidebar in relation to the, uh, I guess, requests that have been made to publish this exhibit without the witness on the stand. I further have considered whether that would be appropriate. I don't know what the uh, contents of the exhibit are because I've not yet reviewed them, but upon hearing it started, I think it would be appropriate that we would require the witness to be in attendance that is connected to this exhibit. So. Uh, let me ask from the defense, does the defense wish to have the witness remain on the stand while the exhibit's published to the jury? Yes, Your Honor. 
I don't know if we'll have any questions for him after it's played, but I think uh, I think both the state and the defense uh, should be entitled to uh, ask questions if necessary after it's played. All right. Um, in consideration of that, I do find it's appropriate that the witness who was previously sworn and under oath would still be so, and he'll uh, be required to observe through the publishing of this audio. So, Mr. Ryan, uh, apologies for the inconvenience here. If you just return back up to the witness stand, and I'll have you remain here through the publishing of this exhibit in case there are any further questions from either side once the exhibit's been played. Uh, Mr. Wood, with that in mind, if you could start the recording over at the beginning, then we'll have it published to the jury at this time. Because I have 
to read for you. I sat there and tried my best to forgive you and Chad and Alex. And I was deceived. And I was broken by my own mother. What are you doing? What are you doing? I prayed to heaven Father, and I said, you tell me, Father.
Does it now? Where was my offer? I was the offer. Well, you I had a dream for two of them. Well, me, I had a dream for two of them. How about that? If you had offered me, you would have known. You cannot sit here and lie. That's not everything. That is not the truth. Okay? That's what people are thinking. They're assuming. And then you walked away. for a very long time, and you never say it. You have no idea how much pain I have felt in my body. I feel like I could die. My own mom, my siblings, and my whole family, my dad, are everyone that's gone except for you, and you're in jail because of it. I have prayed to Heavenly Father himself and asked him to help me survive this. Do you understand the uh, freaking earthquake that has been caused? Do you know how many people are hurt and broken now? And you're telling me that there's a reason? Why are you following Chad down the rabbit hole, Mom? Why would you follow anybody that is not good? How can you follow someone that cannot lead you to salvation in Jesus, Mom? You can't lie to me anymore. You can't pretend anymore. You can't hide anymore. If you want to tell me what happened, I called you for that very reason. You had enough condemnation for the whole the time and eternity, but you're telling me that you're going to stand in front of Jesus Christ and you're going to be fine. That I'm still praying for you. I am still praying for you. I don't know where the lies and all these things are written. I don't see it. I never have. The light of Jesus Christ is the most powerful thing that's ever lived. It's the most loving, embracing thing that has ever happened to this world. And I pray that you see him and fall into his grace. I pray every day. I pray no matter how mad I am at you, no matter how bad I want to hit your husband in the face with a shovel. I pray for you. I pray for him. You ripped my heart out and you ripped out everyone in this family's heart out. I'm going to be in Idaho next, this week. You need to look me in my eye, Mom. Look me in my eye. All right, so that concludes the publication of Exhibit 34B. Does the defense have any further questions for the witness at this time? No questions, Your Honor. All Thank right. you, Mr. Ryan. Okay, um, at this point then, can the witness be excused and released from the subpoena? Yes, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. Okay, that'll conclude your testimony in the trial then, Mr. Ryan. Thank you for appearing.